Toledo wins Moche Pro and splits the odds on the WSL Tour. Drama, search and rescue at the Transat Jacques Vabre and ISF World Cup champs decided in Abu Dhabi. Plunge into the action with NC Sports. Welcome back to the latest NC Sports edition. I'm Mia Turan and we've got a truly packed lineup for you this week with top events and breaking stories from all around the globe. Toledo wins the Moche Pro in Portugal and leaps to number two. The Souza is third, Medina fourth. Will Aussie Mick Fanning hold back the charge of the Brazilians? Charles Popke has today's top story. With 38% of the fleet abandoning the race, senior correspondent Sebastian Descolo has the damage report from an extremely rough Transat Jacques Special guest on the buzz, co-skipper Giancarlo Pedote and Erwan Leroux connects via satellite phone with NC Sports from Fenêtre Prisnian, now at the TGV. Also racing in the Atlantic, the Mini Transat is now tackling leg two to Guadalupe. Plus, Marmalis sailing week, windsurf speed record smashed, clipper race, the road to Bermuda, Andy Van Zyl with the preview, and so much more. Toledo's outstanding victory at the Moche Pro last week confirmed that the Brazilian revolution in men's pro surfing is again leaving a mark in 2015. Felipe with De Souza, world champ Medina and Ferreira are now within the top six positions on the WSL rankings. Question now is, will number one Mick Fanning hold them back at Pipeline? Here is Chalice Popke with today's NC Sports Top Story. Thanks Mia, and yes, this has been another year of Samba and men's pro surfing. Toledo came out on top in Portugal, though just barely. His perfect 10 on the very first wave of the All-Brazilian Finals surely didn't intimidate Italo Ferreira, who responded with a stunning 9.93. But it wasn't quite enough for the Rookie of the Year, who finished just decimals behind Toledo. So it's so good. Um, you know, I just um, had a, a crazy week, you know. Um, I hurt my back. I was, uh, was like feeling kind of pain on my back, but um, I don't know, I'm just so happy, I can't, like, I can't believe, you know, because France was a bummer to me, I was like super like sad you know, after my heat in France, I just like, I was thinking about, you know, like, war title, you know, what what's going on the, the whole year, what I've been doing, you know, so, um, that was good, that was good, because I put my mind on the right place and um, the results came off, so. So happy. With this result, the race for the world title is still wide open and it's back to Hawaii in December, the birthplace of surfing, for the last elite events of the season, the Men's Pipe Masters and the Women's Maui Pro. With the Americans and the Hawaiians out of contention on the men's side, the crown could either go to an Australian or a Brazilian. Australia's Mick Fanning still leads the rankings and so far he's managed to hold back the Brazilian horde. The overall scores, however, are super close. Toledo, Adriano Di Souza, reigning world champ Gabriel Medina, Ozzy Owen Wright, Ferreira, and Ozzy Julian Wilson are all still in the running. Medina, Toledo, and De Souza have the best shots at knocking down Fanning in Hawaii. And should the leader finish below 13th place, even fellow Aussies, Owen Wright and Julian Wilson, have a shot at that title.
It's a busy time in the Atlantic Ocean with both the Jacques Vabre and the Mini Transat now racing through the trade winds. One heading to Brazil and the other now on leg two towards the Caribbean. A number of dramatic daily reports have reached the newsroom from TGV Race Headquarters in one of the toughest editions of this double-handed race. Many are forced to call it quits. From the Mediterranean in his Imoca 60 face ocean, here is Sebastien Destrumeau with the damage report. You're watching the selling updates. Welcome to the office. What a fantastic day here in Toulon. Look at that. It's very sunny, 30 knots of breeze on board face ocean. But our thoughts are with uh, the Imoca class of the Transat Jacques Barbe. After only one week of sailing, half the fleet is gone and one boat is sinking. Hugo boss Alex Thompson. We are going to watch the footage right now. Alex Thompson and Guillermo Afadil set off their emergency beacon after the brand new Imoca 60 was rolled by a wrong wave. The Spanish Coast Guard was informed and sent a rescue helicopter to their location some 80 nautical miles from the Spanish coast. On these footages, one can see that Alex Thompson is being rescued first before his crew member, Guillermo Atadiel. Alex and his team are now back on board Hugo Boss, which is now in a stable situation. The Imoca 60 is undergoing the necessary checks in order to be towed back to La Coruña in Spain. But before that, Metro Coq was the first to go home with a problem with their force day just a few hours after the start. Earlier in the week, Saffron had some structural issues with their foil, however both skippers managed to get the boat back to safety. SMA is heading towards saint Bart in the Caribbean following the destructions of their kills as fairing. The new Gitana had several minor technical problems and Seb Joss decided that it was too dangerous to carry on. Lastly, Saint-Michel Vierbach is the latest casualty amongst the favorite. According to Jean-Pierre Dick, the new boats are too light and will need to be seriously checked and rebuilt before the next Vendée Globe. We'll have more on the very tough start of the Transat Jacques Vavre in the second part of this NC Sports edition including an exclusive chat via satellite phone with Giancarlo Pedote, co-skipper with Erwin Leroux on board of Fenêtre Prismian. While the Jacques Vabre is heading south of the equator, the second leg of the Mini Transat has already left the Canaries on its way to the Caribbean island of Guadalupe. Here's an update and more top events with the NC Sports Briefs. Also racing in the Atlantic, the Mi Transat Ile de Guadalupe is now taking on leg two from the Canaries to the Caribbean. Following Sunday's start in Lanzarote and nearly a week at sea, the fleet of over 60 tiny racers in the Protos and Series divisions are now taking the southwesterly route onto the trade winds to tackle the over 2,700 nautical miles to Puerto Pietro. But it took just a few dozen for a major upset, with leg one winner Davy Baudard knocked out of the race for technical problems on board his Flexirube Cherche Cosponsor. As the first platoon of Protos led by Denis, Michel, and Costner cross Cape Verde, a key passage of leg two. Similar script in the series division, with Harzberg, Fernbach, Lipinski, and a handful of contenders breaking away from the fleet. More mini transat here the Guadalupe updates on the next NC Sports Edition. Nautical Channel is a proud media partner of this mini transat de Guadalupe 2015. Stay tuned for more updates on the next NC Sports Edition. Superb wind conditions for most of the week and then some tricky light airs for the final day marks the 26th edition of the Marmaris International Racing Week. 
a Turkish classic that traditionally closes the IRC season, and above all, one last taste of summer sailing in the Mediterranean. It was an all-Russian podium in Division 1, with Andrei Arbutzov taking the win on Corriere du Cour, followed by teams St. Anna and Fox. Aiden Yurdom successfully defended her home colors in the Gulf of Marmaris by taking the overall win in IRC2 with Goblin, ahead of two more Russian teams, Kasatka and Izmir Yelkin, while Latvia's Igor Buzovskis and the Letlin team dominated the IRC3, closing ahead of the UK's Wigizmo and Turkey's leader, Tale Worlds. Following the west to east Atlantic crossing from Rio de Janeiro in Leg 2, the 14 amateur teams of the Clipper race have now also left South Africa, offering a spectacular start last Saturday under Cape Town's Table Mountain. Yet the light winds and the looks were indeed deceiving. Once rounded Good Hope, the fleet already met some of the harsh conditions that will accompany them for over 5,600 nautical miles of tough southern Indian Ocean. On their way to Albany in Western Australia, powerful howling winds and massive long waves will rocket them all the way across, with the first arrivals expected by end of November. According to the latest reports, LMAX Exchange has a split from the pack and has already built a substantial lead by choosing a northerly route. To the south, in pursuit, are teams of Qingdao, Derry London Derry, Mission Performance, Great Britain and Garmin. Only time will tell who took the best option. Coming up next on NC Sports, an exclusive chat from the Atlantic Ocean with skippers Giancarlo Pedote and Hermann Leroux on board Fenetra Prismian, now racing at Jacques Pabre. Albo and Yagi crush windsurfing world speed records, and much, much more. Welcome back for more NC Sports. And today on The Buzz, we have some very special guests connecting with us from the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Co-skippers Giancarlo Pedote and Hermann Leroux are now racing at the Transat Jacques Vabre in the 50-foot multi-hull class Fenetre Prismian. They're connecting with us via satellite phone. Hello, Giancarlo, can you hear us? How are things going? You two have had a sensational season so far, winning basically everything on the multi 50 circuit, and it looks like this Jacques Vabre is going your way. Always best not to forecast, but the situation looks quite promising. Uh, our position in front of Arkema is, uh, is a little bit different because uh, we cross um, the conversional zone uh, more west than uh, him and uh, probably this zone was uh, was um, more little for us two hours ago uh, i see the speed of our camera was uh, around uh, five six knots and maybe i made that uh, the northwest winds that uh, we we keep uh, um, in, in that place, more east uh, is a little bit uh, light and uh, maybe for us it's more difficult to go deeply in the south and uh, cast uh, the trade wind uh, like us. Then I don't, I don't know, I don't know what happened in, in this uh, area of the sea, if uh, for them everything on board is okay. This is what, what they can image uh, for the statistics 
because uh, because they cross a little bit more east and normally in this area the conditions are, are more difficult but normally not uh, always well what's the life like on board for the team how is the franco-italian duo coming along the life uh, on board of uh, Fenetria Prismian for me and their one is uh, very, very nice. We find uh, our rhythm and uh, we, we can um, repose good and uh, have a nice rest, take uh, our, um, our food uh, as necessary. The boat is uh, perfect. Today I think that uh, we keep some time for uh, for do a little bit clean inside and uh, for the rest, no, no, it's a uh, it's very nice experience for for both and uh, we keep pleasure now with this uh, condition of the wind, the the light, the sea is uh, is light and uh, now is a very good moment for uh, for take pleasure at uh, rather for take rest, for, uh, for, for eat, for everything. We must uh, really, really appreciate uh, this condition because uh, maybe in the next days it can be different. Well, thanks so much to both Juan and Giancarlo for taking time in their busy schedule. Till next time and fair winds to Fenetro Prismian on its way to Brazil. The road to Rio passed through Abu Dhabi last week for the finals of the ISAF World Cup 2015, the last event of the season for Olympic sailing classes. After three long years of hard training and many competitions, the games in Brazil are now just months away, so the expectations were running high. Season performances and forecasts were mostly confirmed this year in Abu Dhabi. Aussies Matt Belcher and Will Ryan clearly dominated the men's 470s, with a huge lead over Sweden's Dahlberg and Bergstrom, and America's McNay and Hughes. Hannah Mills and Saskia Clark also built a strong lead to clinch their gold for the UK in women's 470s, ahead of Austria's Badlao and Olgar, and a surprising team Japan with Yoshida and Yoshoka. Big upset in women's laser radial with Sweden's Josephine Olsen snatching victory away from both favorites, Holland's Bomester and Rindholm from Belgium. Tom Burton literally cruised to the gold in the men's laser championship ahead of Contidas from Cyprus, while Wern, another Aussie, closed with the bronze. Ivan Pastor got his RSX win in Abu Dhabi ahead of Brazil's Santos and Squires from the UK. While in the ladies, Brioni Shaw once again dominated the scene with 6 wins in 10 races and got her gold ahead of Italy's Tartaglini and Freitas from Brazil. Seeking an Olympic spot in future games, IKA Formula Kite Sailors also competed in the Emirates, with Britain's Oliver Bridge holding back Florian Tritel and Alejandro Climent from Spain. Another breaking story has reached the newsroom this week as Francis Antoine Elbeau and Karin Yagi from Switzerland have just set brand new world records last Monday at the spectacular Luderitz Speed Challenge in Namibia. Thanks to phenomenal conditions with gusts up to 50 knots, Elbeau improved his own 2012 result by taking the new mark up to an unbelievable 53.27 knots. Yeah, the feeling is uh, it's super hard because the wind was, the sand was flying a lot. So you, you, you actually, you could, so on some run, I think I did like two, three runs, I couldn't see where I was going. Sometimes I could see the the point, the point side of the canal, and it was, it was, it was difficult. It was dangerous sometimes. 
Uh, I touched one time, but I didn't fall one time, so I'm pretty happy because it was super, super easy to crash today. Several other national records fell in the peculiar lanes of the Luderitz Canal, a paradise for purebred speed sailors. On her first time in Namibia, Karin Yagi topped the women's fleet and closed her performance with 46.31 knots and the world record. Normally I'm doing better with uh, strong wind and I just uh, tried to keep doing my runs as quickly as possible because I knew at some stage it probably would get unsailable. And then once I, I, see, I checked my GPS at the finish and I saw 36, I was like, wow, that should be it. <laughs> That's amazing. And then from then uh, I started relaxing a bit. We're back in the newsroom with Andy Van Ziel for the latest highlights about the Nautical Channel programming. Hello, Andy. So we've got a brand new series of America's Cup coming up. That's absolutely right, Mia. We have our new exclusive series called The Road to Bermuda. It's the only TV series in the entire world that gives you a backstage pass into the build-up of the America's Cup. Oh, wow, Road to Bermuda sounds very exciting. Uh, um, I know that the Nautical Channel team has already managed to gather some exclusive material, is that right? That's right. Let's get a sneak peek into Rachel's interview with Grant Gibbons, the man who brought the America's Cup to Bermuda. It would be fair to say we saw it as a long shot from the, uh, the beginning. Uh, after all, we all saw San Francisco uh, and uh, it was a huge uh, and exciting production there. Uh, Bermuda is a much smaller place, but as we got farther into it, we said, we can do this. And uh, in the end, it came down to Bermuda and San Diego, and uh, we, we came through. It was a fantastic moment, uh, very exciting. Once again, great stuff coming this fall on Nautical Channel. Thank you, Andy, for filling us in. And now, let's take a look at what's happening next week on the NC Sports Calendar. The Class 1 Powerboat World Championship is back in the Emirates and will hit the Abu Dhabi racetrack this weekend for the last key event of the 2015 season. It's the final battle in this prime UIM series and the 22-foot Powercats topping speeds of over 100 knots will surely rev up the crowds. The USA's Balo and Tomlinson on Abu Dhabi 6 have practically secured the title, but with 900 horsepower in the hull, anything can and will happen. Emirati's Al Mansuri and Al Tayer on Abu Dhabi 5 are tied overall for second with Italians Fendi and Carpitella of T-Bone Station. Local stars Al Zafain and Ben Hendy on victory, trailing fourth. The world's top junior surfers are headed to Barbados from November 12th to the 15th for the Soup Bowl Pro, the final qualifying event of the 2015 season. This will be the last chance for the under-20 Groms to earn a spot at the WSL Junior Championships. Boys champ Daniel Glenn defends his title, while rising star and hometown hero Chelsea Tuak is the favorite among the girls. The Round the World Sailing Speed Record, also known as the Jules Verne Trophy, held since 2012 by French legend Loïc Peron on Banque Populaire 5, is under serious challenge. Two different teams are now on standby since late October, waiting for the best weather window. Jan Gouchard and Donna Bertarelli's Maxi Trimer on Spindrift 2, with rival Francis Yoyan on IDEX Sport, have been refitting and testing their super machines all summer and now they're ready for that record hunt. The Jules Verne Trophy race course spans around the globe for nearly 22,000 nautical miles. The time to beat set by Peyron was 45 days, 13 hours, 42 minutes, and 53 seconds, with an average speed of 19.75 knots.
time's up for today, but NC Sports will be back in a brand new edition, complete with highlights, insight and results from top events around the world. I'm Mia Charan and I'll see you next week. Remember, plunge into the action with NC Sports.